focused on the social, economic, and psychological conditions in the ghettos, along with the lack of public transportation and the depressed status of blacks and Mexican Americans in the area. Despite its social conscience, the report was important for those who wanted to lay blame in the ghettos. Future governor and future President Reagan referred to the rioters as lawbreakers and mad dogs. The Los Angeles police chief insisted that the riots were the work of a gang of Negro hoodlums. Um, chief Parker of the Los Angeles County Police Department also described the rioters as monkeys in a zoo. Mayor Yorty insisted that a small portion of the ghetto community had instigated the riots and had expertise in such areas as making Molotov cocktails, um, a fact that was ultimately rejected by the commission. Um, name calling was not uncommon. Decades later in the 1992 Rodney King riots, um, it became known through the, the um, uh, I forgot the name of the commission, but um, Warren Christopher chaired the commission, who was a, uh, a, a famous political person in the US. Um, they reported that the Los Angeles Police Department used the term NHI when issuing a radio call to a police officer to respond to a home where they thought that there were only black residents or in black sections of the city. NHI stood for no humans involved. So in the 60s, the views of leaders like Governor Reagan, Mayor Yorty, and Chief Parker created a lot of pressure to increase policing in the minority community. The McComb Commission, despite its generally liberal and socially conscious analysis, presented an important and useful theory of racial violence that was used by conservatives to mobilize law. The national reaction, I think as many of you know, was quite different. The Kerner Commission, as it was named after its um, chairman, uh, uh, former Governor Otto Kerner of Illinois, delivered a report starkly in contrast to the McCone Commission. The long, hot summer of 1967 created a political space in which to challenge the riffraff theory, and that theory with the theory that had been advanced by McCone. The Kerner Commission was unequivocal in famously concluding, our nation is moving towards two societies, one black and one white, separate and unequal. The Kerner report, so, report saw the violence as criminal, but as a, not as criminal, but as a response to oppression and something that could only be cured by a fundamental change in the actions of white America. Then President Johnson recognized the political costs of the riots, and they were profound, and he claimed that each riot cost me 90,000 votes. Like now, the political world was dominated by television sound bites, reducing complex questions and sensationalizing the events. In 1967, riots had become the first issue of concern identified in public opinion polls, more so than the costly war in Vietnam. And Americans worried aloud about their personal safety, even though the risks were not nearly, were not evenly distributed among the population. Liberals were caught in a, caught in a bind, avoiding placing blame on black agitators or black muggers, meeting statistics with disbelief, but generally unable to make their case to the public. The Democratic candidate for president in 1968, uh, Vice President Hubert Humphrey, reflected this dilemma, and he was ineffectual against the decisive law and order campaign that was the margin of Richard Nixon's narrow presidential election in 1968. Running on a promise to restore, lo restore law and order to the silent majority, silent majority, Nixon juxtaposed the term crime with his notion